Okay, we'll work through the solution to mechanics and materials um, quiz two. And so we're told here we have a uh, pole that's supported uh, with a pin connection at the bottom, and there's a guy wire from A to B, so the top of the pole down to some point to the left of the pole, and then there's a load to the right. And we're told the diameter of the wire, we're told the material of the wire, so it's A36 steel. The diameter is 0 0.25 inches. We're also told that load, it's shown on the diagram. And then we're told some material properties. So the uh, modulus of elasticity for A36 is 29,000 KSI. Poisson's ratio is 0 0.284. The yield strength is 36 KSI. And we're also told to assume the wire behaves perfectly elastically. So that gets us to be able to use Hooke's Law. stress strain times our modulus and then we're told how we get points for this so finding the force in AB gets us two points finding our strain gets us three points finding our length of AB is one point our total deformation over that length is two points so that's how much it stretches that's code for delta and then last we need to uh, ver verify our assumption that the elastic assumption is true or not we get two points for that and then at the end if we still have some time we can take a look and see what the minimum diameter of AB is to keep the cable in the elastic range so maybe it's something bigger maybe it's something smaller depends on what we find for our uh, conclusion on whether that assumption is correct or not so our approach here step one we'll use equation of equilibrium to find our force AB. Step two, use Hooke's Law to find strain. So we have a force. We know the area of this because of its diameter. So we'll have you know, stress equals epsilon E, which also is Hooke's Law, and stress also equals our force for our area. So we'll set those two equal to each other in that step and look for to find uh, epsilon strain. Step three, find LAB. So LAB, we'll use some trigonometry and then step four, delta is going to be our strain times our LAB, All right, so our change in our deformation is going to be our strain times our length and then finally is stress less than or equal to stress yield oh, stress yield and that will be our confirming our assumption or not all right so taking a look step one I'll kind of move over to the right here step one we'll do an equation of equilibrium At this point we have some reactions at the ground I'm going to take the moments around C equal to zero. So what do we have for moments? We have a negative moment from this, this applied load here. It would cause clockwise rotation. So I'm going to have negative six kips times eight feet. And then at uh, point B, we're going to have a positive moment plus have the force AB and what component of that we're only going to have the horizontal component so it's going to be sine of 30 and then we're going to multiply that by our length 8 plus 5 is 13 feet so rearranging that we get FAB 
is 48. Kip feet over 13 feet times sine of 30. So I pulled this to the left side, made it positive, divided by sine of 30, divided by 13, gives me that value. So FAB is going to equal FAB is 7.385 kips to three significant figures. FAB 7.39 kips. Alright, so that was step one. That gets us plus two points there. Scrolling down a little bit, the next step is to use Hooke's Law. Step two, find strain. So Hooke's law, at sigma equals E epsilon, which also equals force, force over area. So our force, force we know, our area, we don't know, we know E. So we know everything here, we can calculate A. So if I rearrange that, epsilon equals F over AE. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna convert this into pounds, just to keep everything simple. 7,385 pounds over, our area is gonna be pi over four, times our diameter squared, and then our 29E to the, Six is there. Is there modulus? So if I carry that math out, I find epsilon is zero point zero zero five one eight eight inch per inch, or and then to three significant figures, epsilon equals five point one nine times ten to the negative three inch per inch. And that gets us three points. So we're applying Hooke's Law as well as stress equals F over A. That's why this one's a little more. Our length, I'm going to move over to this side here, just in the interest of space. Three LAB, this question mark. So what do we have here? Well, we have, I'm going to change my, rotate my triangle a little bit here. So this is 13, this is LAB. This is 30 degrees. So what is this is going to be the cosine of 30 degrees equals 13 over LAB. So LAB equals 13 over cosine 30. And that goes to 15.5. Zero one feet. So to three second figures, LAB equals fifteen point zero feet. All right. So we've gotten those down, and then our last. Uh, we've got two steps, I guess, left. So step four. Our deformation equals epsilon LAB. Delta equals. 0.005188. So I'm going back to my four significant figures to get a little bit more accuracy, not rounding. And I'm also going to do the same with my length, 15.01 feet. And I'm going to multiply that by 12 inches per feet to get this in inches. So delta is going to be 0.93. Five inches. All right. So we got one point for this. We get two points for this. And then five is elastic assumption valid. So 
So what does that mean? I mean our stress is less than or equal to stress is less than or equal to our yield stress. So what is our stress? It's our force over our area. Um, or we could do this another way. We could say our yield stress equals our yield um, strain times our modulus. And so we'd be calculating a yield strain. We know this is 36 KSI. We know this is 29,000 KSI. Could follow that and see is is sigma or epsilon less than or equal to epsilon y. Um, so we could go either one of those. I'm going to go this way here first. So we're going to have 7,385 over uh, our over our area, which was pi over four. 0.25 squared which goes to I didn't calculate that out before I started let me plug that into the calculator quick so we have uh, 0.25 squared times pi divided by 4 over time 7385 so I found that to be 150, 445 psi. So, no, we shouldn't use the elastic assumption because our KS uh, that's greater than 36,000. Or if we went this way, e epsilon y equals 36 over 29,000, and that was 0 0.001. To four inch per inch, which is less than, not equal to, less than our 5.19 times 10 to the negative third. So also no. So either way, and then our final uh, extra credit. So this has got us plus two here. Be to calculate what that area needs to be or what the diameter needs to be. So just I'm just gonna squeeze it in here at the bottom. Six extra credit. Sigma equals sigma y, so we're at yield. That's when we can't can no longer make the elastic assumption, and that's the last point we can make that assumption. So that's going to be our FAB over our A required, and A required is going to be pi r squared, and we'll just multiply that r by two. So we're going to have um, so A, uh, A equals FAB over 36,000 PSI, so A equals 7385, is that what it was? Yeah, over 36,000, so A needs to be 0 0.2051 inches squared. If we do the math there, our diameter needs to equal 0 0.511 Zero seven inches, and since we need the the minimum diameter, if we've put zero point five one one, we would end up with a stress slightly over yield. So D equals zero point five one two inches. And that would get us plus two extra credit. So hopefully that makes a little more sense talking through it. Showing, showing our work as we went through. Um, so we needed the equation of equilibrium, and we need to remember Hooke's law and relating that to our general definition of stress as force over area. A little trig, pretty easy there to get the one point. Then our deformation is our epsilon times our original length. And then finally, validating that assumption. And then if we wanted extra credit, you can solve for that um, that required diameter.